I would like to join others in paying tribute to the late Doddy Weir. It was clear throughout his life, both as a player and a campaigner, that he was a force to be reckoned with. He viewed his heartbreaking diagnosis of motor neuron disease as a call to action and bravely shared his story with the world, raising millions of pounds for that cause. He was an inspiration to us all and a champion for those battling MND and our thoughts are with his family and friends at this difficult time. Presiding officer, breast cancer chemotherapy in NHS Tayside has collapsed, leaving vulnerable women traveling across the country to receive life-saving treatment. At the root of the problem is a chemotherapy dosing scandal that has gone on for three and a half years. Yesterday, the Courier released a documentary where the women affected and grieving families demanded answers. We now know that nobody believes the conclusions of the reports commissioned by the First Minister's government. Patients don't believe them, the doctors don't believe them, and even the whistleblower who first raised the alarm described the conclusions of the reports as nothing more than a guess. For years, Labour has raised this issue and been dismissed by this government. So will the First Minister order an independent inquiry to restore confidence, to relaunch the service, and give patients and the public the facts they need. First Minister. Well, firstly, before responding uh, to the very serious issues that have been raised, can I say, first of all, that Anna Sarwar is wrong to describe the Tayside service as having collapsed. Uh, that neither comes close to accurately describing the current service, nor does it do anything to help any current patients or the dedicated doctors that are working within that centre. And let me illustrate that point, because it is a really important point for those, uh, particularly those in Tayside who might be watching this right now. Uh, there are around 150 new patients referred to Tayside breast services every week. Out of them, around seven will receive treatment in another centre. Uh, so it is just wrong, and I think shamefully wrong, to use the word collapsed to describe a service in which uh, doctors are working in a dedicated fashion, in which many uh, patients are being treated every single week. Um, in terms of the uh, issues about the review, these are serious issues. These are issues uh, that require to be assessed uh, by experts and by clinicians. Uh, I am not, and politicians uh, are not uh, clinicians with the expertise to reach uh, judgments ourselves on uh, these matters. I will look carefully at what has been reported today, as will the Health Secretary, and if there is further, uh, a further process of review that is necessary, we will not shy away from uh, taking that. Uh, the RCP review commissioned by NHS Tayside into prescribing practices up to early 2020 uh, uh, happened. The, the board will be implementing all of its uh, recommendation. That review looked at a random selection of case notes from before and after uh, the HIS review uh, and confirmed variation in practice against national norms, as the HIS review had already found, uh, but pointed to a range of improvements in practice uh, since then. And the authors of that RCP review included four oncologists, uh, and of course its findings aligned with previous published reviews, including that of Healthcare Improvement Scotland. So we will continue to take these issues uh, seriously, uh, but we will also do so responsibly. Anna Sarwar. I, I would suggest the First Minister actually watches the documentary and listens to the stories of staff at NHS Tayside and the experiences of families. There are zero breast cancer oncologists in Tayside. Zero. If zero doesn't equate to collapse, then I'm not sure what definition the First Minister would use. And this does have consequences for staff. There is a workforce crisis across our NHS, but particularly felt here in Tayside. A recent Freedom of Information request showed there are nine vacancies in the oncology department, with the lead breast cancer consultant post now vacant for 839 days. That has consequences for patients too. Over 200 women have had to travel to other parts of the country to get their treatment. In February, the First Minister said this was unacceptable, but since then things are getting worse. The government's failure to get a grip of this crisis is putting women's lives at risk. At one of the most traumatic times in a woman's life, they are facing additional barriers to treatment and all the anxiety that comes with that. So can the First Minister tell us when local oncology services will be restored and can she guarantee that breast cancer oncology services have a future in Tayside? First Minister. Oh. 
Anna Sarwar asked about watching uh, the documentary. I will certainly uh, take the time to do that. But the Health Secretary hasn't just watched the documentary, he took part in the documentary. Uh, these issues are issues that all of us uh, take seriously. The Cabinet Secretary is meeting with the current clinical teams next week. And let me take the opportunity to assure patients in Tayside that they have a very committed and compassionate team of doctors that deliver excellent care. Uh, recruitment efforts are ongoing and indeed uh, there has been recent success in recu recruiting a consultant in colorectal uh, cancer in uh, Tayside. Uh, Tayside uh, NHS though works closely with oncology teams in the other four cancer centres across Scotland to ensure that patients who need treatment are prioritised uh, appropriately. And let me repeat what I said in my original answer. Yes, there are challenges in the Tayside service. Yes, there have been reviews that have been necessary. If there are further reviews, we will not shy away uh, from those and there is further work uh, to be done. But 150 new patients referred to Tayside breast services every week and of them, just seven have to go to another centre to receive treatment. So it does a disservice uh, not, not to raise these issues. It is absolutely right to raise these issues. But it does do a disservice to those working uh, in that centre to describe it as being in a state of collapse, because that is not the case. Anna Sarwar. Uh, First Minister, the women in Tayside don't want to see the health secretary in a documentary. They want to see a breast cancer oncologist in Tayside. And that problem has still not been fixed. Uh, and I'm sorry, but the First Minister has said little today that will reassure women in Tayside and their families. We do have a failing cancer service, and that is, means staff are being let down, women are being let down, and the First Minister has no serious plan to restore services. And as per usual, Nicola Sturgeon keeps telling us that it is unacceptable, but then accept, expects patients to accept it anyway. And we've seen it again this week. Ambulances still queuing at a &E's. Elderly patients still waiting on trolleys for treatment. The longest waiting list in history. Now over three quarters of a million Scots on an NHS waiting list. And women in Tayside being failed by the collapse of cancer services. First Minister, you are in charge of the NHS in Scotland. And you have been for 15 years. How long do Scots have to wait before you get to grips with this crisis and actually do your job? First Minister. I am in charge uh, as head of this government of the National Health Service, which is why I understand uh, that running the National Health Service, that resolving challenges and problems in the National Health Service takes more than glib sound bites in the chamber uh, of the Scottish Parliament. And has, as, they, as they have been throughout the entirety of the 15 years uh, that my party has been in government, the people of Scotland will be the ultimate and indeed the only judge uh, of whether or not uh, this government is trusted to continue uh, with its stewardship of the National Health Service. Um, all of these issues are taken seriously. It was uh, because of original concerns about potentially substandard care uh, that many of these issues uh, came to the fore. And I repeat again what I said. There is work to do here to ensure the sustainability and the ongoing quality uh, of cancer care uh, and breast cancer care in NHS Tayside. Uh, but the vast, overwhelming majority of those referred into that service um, do not go for treatment to another centre. They get quality treatment uh, in NHS Tayside. And I say it again, it does a disservice to that service uh, to suggest otherwise. And in terms of the wider points, uh, again, day in and day out, this government works to address the significant challenges that our NHS is under. So if we look at the if we look at the, the statistics published just this week, significant increase in the number of inpatient and day case patients seen uh, in the last quarter, a 7.3% increase. Uh, the referral to treatment target, uh, an increase in the number, uh, the percentage of those seen within 18 weeks, 72.5%, uh, and reductions of the longest waits in our National Health Service, a 20% reduction in outpatients and a 22% reduction uh, for inpatient and day cases. Uh, so we will continue to do the hard work of supporting our NHS uh, through these difficult times because that's our job, that's our responsibility, a responsibility given to us by the people of Scotland.